Hello students, welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lessons, we discussed introduction to physics and we looked at different scientific methods of learning and one of it was measurements. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss measurements one and we are going to realize that measurement plays a very important role because it allows us to do comparison and quantification of different quantities. It also plays a very key role in scientific research, engineering, and even in everyday life. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to define measurement define SI unit and state the reason for establishment of SI units in science and then finally explain the types of physical quantities which we are going to state as basic quantities and derived quantities so by the end of this lesson you should be able to distinguish the two and even explain more about them so what exactly is measurements? Measurement is the process of finding the size of physical quantities. And physical quantities, these are properties or observable properties of matter that can be assigned a number. So in this case, we will be interested in the three states of matter. That is solid, liquid, and gas. And we are going to find we are going to find the size of solids, size of liquids, and then size of gases. And we are going to use different units as mass. We are going to use things like volume, length, and many. So in this case, we can find the mass of solids, mass of liquids, and then mass of gases, volumes of solids, volumes of liquids, and volumes of gases and many other things or units that we are going to see later. Now, in order to measure any quantity, a standard unit, or we call it a base, a base unit, base unit, or we call it a standard, standard unit must be chosen, and the standard unit must not be unchangeable this unit which we are going to use must not change must not change over time or expire it should never expire so before 1960 there were several systems of measurements in use around the world among scientists and in 1960 the three scientists realized that they are getting more confused and there's no unity and harmony among scientists so they decided to come up with what we call the standard international units, which we call the system international the unit or the SI units. Now, the SI units, they are used to measure the size of physical quantities, and we are going to look, them, look at them in a few seconds. As we have just mentioned, before 1960, there was a confusion among scientists and they were using different types of units to make measurements so they decided to make this SI units now the reason why they made the SI unit the main reasons is one to have international uniformity so that if any scientist do a research at any place in the world it can be understood all over the world among scientists the second reason why they decided to come up with SI unit is to avoid confusion is to avoid confusion like in the past I think where even now they are using the same units in the United States they used miles miles to measure distance or length then other people in the world they used meter to measure the same distance or to measure length so in this case if you are in usa you talk about miles but if you come to kenya and someone talks about meters you cannot integrate what they are talking about so this one brought about confusion so to avoid this confusion and bring about uniformity the scientists decided to come up with the si unit or the standard 
units of measurement in science. So we have two types of physical quantities in measurement and these quantities can either be obtained by doing a direct measurement using a measuring instrument or you can obtain them by either dividing or multiplying the existing uh, basic quantities. The one that can be obtained directly, then directly by using a measuring instrument are called basic quantities. So basic quantities, all fundamental quantities, these are quantities that you can obtain directly by just reading a measuring instrument. For example, if you want to know the length of your door, then you will take a meter rule and then you measure directly whatever you read there. Length, it will be a basic quantity. Or you take a stopwatch and then you read the time. Right now it is 2.30 p.m. So that is a fundamental quantity. It means you cannot get it from a multiplication of maybe length and volume and then you get time. You cannot do that and get. So you can only obtain it from a measuring instrument. Then the quantity that is obtained by multiplying or dividing other physical quantities, we call it derived quantity. You derive it from other physical quantities. So this one you get, you can only get or obtain, obtain it by multiplication, multiplication or division of other physical quantities and we are going to see example in this case we are going to calculate the work is equals to force times distance or pressure is equals to force trained by area and much more so these are, are examples of derived quantities the one that can be obtained by either division or multiplication of other physical quantities so basic quantities, these are quantities that cannot be obtained from other physical quantities, just as we mentioned. So if they cannot be obtained from other physical quantities, it means they can be obtained, obtained directly, directly from a measuring instrument. So these are quantities which you can obtain by just reading a measuring instrument and a good time a good example in this case is time if you need to read the time just now you have to take a, a watch and then you read the time so another one is length if you want to find the length of maybe uh, a desk then you have to take a measuring instrument and then you measure whatever you read will be a basic quantity they are also called fundamental quantities because they form the foundation of other uh, quantities we only have seven basic quantities and they range from uh, length mass time luminous intensity electric current thermodynamic temperature and amount of substance we are going to look at them shortly so be keen and then we are going to see their SI units. The basic physical quantities are only seven as we have mentioned and they have specific SI units and each SI unit has a specific symbol. So I want you to be very keen on the way I have indicated the SI units and the symbol for SI unit. The first thing that you should note they are written in singular. They are written in singular. It means they are not written in plural. So you can only state them in singular. And then there are those with capital letters and there are those with small letters. Like the first basic quantity is length. It is SI unit is meter. All the letters are in small letters. And then the symbol is small m. Mass, its SI unit is kilogram. The symbol for SI unit is kg, all in small letters. Then time is the third basic quantity. SI unit is second. Then the symbol is small s. 
electric current, its SI unit is ampere, but now A is capital, and then the symbol for SI unit is capital A. Now, the reason why we give some SI units in capital letters, starting with capital letters, is because we named the SI unit courtesy of the person who discovered the basic quantity. Like in this case, Mr. Ampire discovered electric current. So this is a name of a person. That's why we start with capital letters. Now look at thermodynamic temperature. It is SI unit is Kelvin. And Kelvin in this case, the first letter is capital. It means it's named after person. And then the symbol for SI unit is capital K. Luminous intensity, its SI unit is candela, and we have capital C, so it means luminous intensity was discovered by a person called the candela, and the symbol is CD, where C is capital. And then the last one is amount of substance, which its SI unit is moles. So when you are writing the symbols, all the SI units of these basic quantities, you should be very keen on those rules that I've mentioned. Names starting, with the, the, the names starting with the names of a person must start with capital letter and even the symbol for SI unit should be start with capital. Now, derived quantities, this is the second category of quantities that we mentioned and we said these quantities are obtained. These are obtained by either multiplication or division, by either multiplication or division of other physical quantities. So it means in this case, if you have two basic quantities, like you have length and width, these two are basic quantities because they are they lie under length. So if you multiply length times width, you will get area. So area area is an example of a derived quantity another example of derived quantity is volume volume in this case let's say you have a cylinder if you have a cylinder with a cross-sectional area a then it means in this case or uh, you are going to find volume as cross-sectional area times height. We have a height here. So in this case, you have multiplied a derived quantity with a basic quantity. Height, remember, is an example of length. So if you multiply a derived quantity with a uh, basic quantity, whatever you will get volume will be a derived quantity because you have obtained it from other physical quantities. And another one, Another example that I can give is velocity. Velocity is measured or is calculated as displacement defined by time. So in this case, displacement is distance, or we can call it a distance covered over time. So, so long as we are doing a division between these two basic quantities, then it means the result we are going to get is a derived quantity. So students, that will mark the end of our lesson today. Remember, we have discussed measurement and we have said measurement is the process of obtaining the size of physical quantities. Then we have said we only have two types of physical quantities, that is basic quantities and derived quantities. And then we have looked at the SI unit of the seven basic quantities then we have looked at the different examples of derived quantities. So welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified. In the next lesson, we will discuss length as our first basic quantity.